Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we're taking a look at the HD 7970 GHz edition and while this is a card I did take a look at a while back I wanted to look at it today because right now we have a bit of a GPU crisis going on and there may be a little bit of relief in one of these 7970s. Now this Tahiti based GPU did launch all the way back in 2012 at a price tag of $499 USD so it was a little bit expensive back then and it is quite old but what we're really trying to figure out today is whether it can still be used as at least a stopgap GPU here in 2021 as we wait on other much more capable cards to come back into stock so let's take a look at it now there are a few use case scenarios for something like a 7970 and the first one is if you are somebody that doesn't really build a gaming PC all that often or maybe you just put together your current gaming rig back in 2012 or shortly thereafter and you still have a 7970 gigahertz edition in your system and maybe you're just happy with it and you just haven't had any good reason to upgrade it in which case there is absolutely no reason to well upgrade your GPU especially right now when it's virtually impossible to find something at a reasonable price, upgrading your current GPU is probably not the greatest idea at the moment. The other use case for something like a 7970 is you are just looking to build a system right now, you have everything together, or possibly you just have the finances behind your bank account right now to afford a new gaming rig, and you really just want to get up and running, in which case a 7970 might be one of your better options at the moment for a stopgap GPU. Now for me, a stopgap GPU has to have a couple of different things. First and foremost, it has to be affordable, which the 7970 actually is one of the more affordable GPUs readily available in the United States at least on eBay and I will link some of them down below or link the search for them down below but basically right now you can find a 7974 between 110 to 150 dollars now for a GPU that is now going on something like nine years old uh, yeah that's not exactly a great deal but again beggars can't really be choosers and right now this is about all we have because even the like GTX 900 series at this point is getting quite expensive. 970s I just looked today are going off for around $200 on the low end. So $150 on the high end and you can snag them for about $110, $115 if you're lucky. The 7970 is actually looking like uh, it's going to sit at a price where you might be able to justify as a stopgap solution. Now the other qualification for a stopgap solution is you have to be able to at least get some of your money back out of it and once again the 7970 does qualify in that regard and that's mostly because if you invest just 110 to 150 dollars now once the GPU market starts to settle down especially if you are able to grab a GPU right when the market is starting to settle down you should be able to get most of your money back out of this by either selling it back on eBay or even selling it locally so the 7970 does offer you that opportunity because it hasn't really spiked in cost the same way other cards have now it's still certainly more expensive than it was a while back like when I got this thing it was not hundred and ten dollars in fact it was ninety dollars so it's definitely gone up in cost but you should be able to get most of your money back out of it. Now for our testing today, we are reverting back to the Ryzen 5600X as our test CPU of choice. And the 5600X is gonna absolutely keep us from having a bottleneck on the CPU side whatsoever, especially with a card this old. We do have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory with that 5600X and that memory is running at 3200 megahertz. And also worth noting is we are running our games off of a SATA based SSD as usual. So with that out of the way, Wait, let's take a look at the 7970 in some games and see if it's really worth purchasing as that stopgap solution. Now first up as usual we do have Fortnite. This is running at 1080p on the low preset and actually with a capable CPU this was a very good experience. I saw an average FPS here of 170, a 1% 1 low of 118, and a 0.1% low there of 66. And from an anecdotal perspective I didn't really see the frame rate dipping really really low at any given point so this was actually a really excellent experience. So much so that I actually finished third in this game, which, granted, not as good as first place like I did in my last game, but third place is still pretty good. Unless you're Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby would say no. In Overwatch at 1080p on the high preset, once again, a very good experience. We saw an average FPS here of 147, a 1% low of 112, and a 0.1% low of 102. And once again, this is a really nice experience from a card 
uh, that is nine years old now or eight and a half years old and it's running granted on a game that is quite well optimized at this point but uh, running in Overwatch and other esports titles like Overwatch or Fortnite, this card is going to be a really good experience for you. But that's sort of where this card does fall apart a bit. With Red Dead Redemption 2 at least running the benchmark, the average FPS here was just 31, and this is at 720p low settings with a 1% low of 20 and a 0.1% low of 19. So with Red Dead Redemption 2, you are absolutely not going to want to run this card. It's just not a good experience. Though I will say while I was running the benchmark, I saw something I've never seen with this benchmark where my horse almost actually got stuck on the sidewalk because one of the other horses ran in front of it. It was, it was just a whole thing. So the benchmark actually took a little bit longer than it usually would. But the point being here is this card is really not suitable for Red Dead Redemption 2. And the same can be said of Cyberpunk 2077. Now, if you really want to run Cyberpunk, you can do it at 720p. Though I will say this, when I was driving fast and like uh, a quick car, uh, the frame rate did definitely drop into the lower 20s. Here you see the average at 41, a 1% low of 30, and 0.1% low at 26. But again, I don't really feel comfortable recommending this card with this particular title. If Cyberpunk is what you do want to play, then you're going to need a more powerful GPU at least to enjoy the experience because the other side to it is at 720p low settings, you don't have a very good looking game. It's just not really a good experience for the end user. And then for a little bit of a pick me up, there are a couple of new titles out that you can run with this card and still have a very good experience. For example, Hitman 3 in the Dubai level, and I've actually switched over to actually walking around in the Dubai level instead of running the benchmark. We had an average frame rate at 1080p on medium settings of 59, 1% lows there at 43, and 0.1% lows at 41. So this was actually a good experience in a pretty much a brand new title here. So there are certainly some new titles out that can run with this particular card. So at this point, I guess it's conclusion time at $110 and really even all the way up to $150, this card can make sense for you if you're looking for a stopgap solution. With that being said, you really do want it to match up with the types of games that you play. For instance, if you're running mostly esports type titles, this may be a great solution and a great opportunity to grab a card to get your new system up and running. If on the other hand, you're used to running uh, some really demanding titles out there, then this is probably not the card for you, especially if those demanding titles titles are recent titles, it's going to struggle in those very highly demanding titles. That being said, if there are games that I didn't benchmark here, which is very likely because I only had five games there, uh, you'll want to do your research before you purchase this card because these older cards, uh, they may not have the best driver support compared to newer cards and it may be a little bit difficult based on just looking at the benchmarking numbers from one game to really uh, even guess at what another game is going to do. So if there are games that you have specifically in mind for your new gaming rig, do the research. There's almost certainly YouTube videos out there of this card being benchmarked with other titles. So, you know, do your research and make sure it's going to fit your needs. But if it does fit your needs, it is definitely still a viable solution here in 2021. All that being said, I do want to hear from you guys, especially those of you that have some older hardware and are still gaming on it. Let me know what your older hardware is, how it's doing here in 2021, especially how it's doing in some new titles. Let me know all your thoughts in those comments down below. And if you like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.